Thursday, the 25th of April, 2024. Good evening and welcome to Evening Prayer for Thursday in the fourth week of Easter, Year B. Today we celebrate the Feast of St. Mark. Thank you for joining us in worship. Let us take a look at Mark the Evangelist. Though little is known for certain about St. Mark's life, the gospel attributed to him is one of the most important scripts ever written. In the shortest of the four gospels, Mark recounts Jesus' public ministry in concise and vivid detail. Likely written for Roman Gentiles, Mark's gospel often describes Jewish customs to the reader. The Acts of the Apostles and various epistles speak of Mark as well as John Mark, who were likely the same person and the Gospel writer. St. Mark is believed to have been born in Cyrenaica, modern-day Libya, under Roman, Jew under Roman rule. John, as his Jewish name, and, and Mark is his Roman name. Mark's mother, named Mary, likely moved with Mark to Jerusalem after his father's death. Their home might have been the location of the Last Supper and also the place where Peter went after the angel released him from prison. As a teenager, Mark might have been the young man wearing a linen cloth who ran off, who ran off. Um, St. Barnabas, St. Paul's missionary companion, was either Mark's cousin or uncle. Shortly after Peter escaped from prison and arrived at Mark's home, Mark traveled north to Antioch in Syria with Barnabas and Paul. From Antioch, he accompanied Barnabas and Paul on a missionary journey to Antioch in Pisidia, modern-day Turkey. Before completing their journey, Mark left Paul and Barnabas and returned to Jerusalem. It is unclear why Mark left, but Paul regarded his departure as abandonment. When Paul and Barnabas were setting out on another missionary journey, Barnabas wanted to take Mark along. Paul was so opposed to the idea that Barnabas and Paul separated. Barnabas and Mark went to Cyprus and Paul took another companion with him through Syria and Cilicia. Mark appeared to have been close to the Apostle Peter because Peter refers to him as Mark, my son, in a letter addressed to several Christian communities. Mm -hmm. Peter sent greetings to them from Mark, indicating that Mark was well known to, their com to those communities. Peter's letter was most likely written from Rome, where he would be martyred. It might be that while Mark was with Peter in Rome, he wrote his gospel at Peter's request, basing it on Peter's preaching. Though St. Paul and Mark initially had a difficult relationship as a result of Mark's early departure from Paul and Barnabas' missionary journey, they became close near the end of Paul's life. Paul refers to him as a co-worker in a few letters he wrote from prison, indicating that Mark had been very helpful to him. According to later traditions, Mark was ordained as a bishop and sent to Alexandria, Egypt, to preach the gospel and to establish the first church in Africa. He is considered the first bishop of Alexandria. In Alexandria, Mark encountered the wrath of local Alexandrians and was martyred after almost 20 years of ministering to them. This work is taken mm -hmm. from the Catholic Society on the Internet. I recall Something in the way you called 
my name An ordinary fisherman You called me friend And took me in How everything had changed It was then I knew I'd never be the same Love came and rescued me I gave up my everything to follow Now I know All that I was before It won't matter anymore For I am A new man Cause I have seen My Savior Face to face I recall Standing in the courtyard By the fire Your words still ringing in my head Three times before the break of morn You would be denied And yet I saw no judgment in your eyes came and died for me I gave up my everything to follow Now I know all that I was before is dead and it lives no more for I am a new man cause I around us therefore we too must throw off our throw off every encumbrance and the sin that all too readily restricts us and run with resolution the race which lies ahead of us our eyes fixed on Jesus the pioneer and perfecter of faith blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ by his great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. 
To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant, merciful Lord, to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Psalms appointed for today are Psalm 67 and 96. Psalm 67 My God, no, may God be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of his countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth her increase. May God, our own God, give us his blessing. May God give us his blessing. And may all the ends of the earth stand in awe of him. Psalm 96 Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the whole earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He is more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols. But it is the Lord who made the heavens. Oh, the majesty and magnificence of his presence. Oh, the power and splendor of his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations. The Lord is king. He has made the world so firm that it cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice, and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder, and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful, and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy before the Lord, when he comes, when he comes to judge the earth. 
he will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the word of the Lord written in the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 62, verses 6 to 12. That's Isaiah 62, 6 to 12. Upon your walls, O Jerusalem, I have posted sentinels. All day and all night they shall never be silent. You who remind the Lord, take no rest and give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem and makes it a re renowned throughout the world, the earth. The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by his mighty arm, I will not again give your grain to be food for your enemies, and foreigners shall not drink the wine for which you have labored. But those who garner it shall eat it and praise the Lord, and those who gather it shall drink it in my holy courts. Go through, go through the gates, prepare the way for the people. Build up, build up the highway, clear it of stones, lift up an ensign over the peoples. The Lord has proclaimed to the end of the earth, Say to daughter Zion, see, your salvation comes, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. They shall be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and you shall be called sought out, a citizen, a city not forsaken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in you, O God, my Savior. For you have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things, and the rich you have sent away empty. You have come to the help of your servant Israel, for you have remembered your promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the word of the Lord, written in the second letter of Paul to Th Timothy, chapter 4, verses 1 to 11. That's 2 Timothy 4, 1 to 11. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, Proclaim the message. Be persistent whether the time is favorable or unfavorable. Convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience in teaching. For the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to myths. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, 
do the work of an evangelist, carry out your ministry fully. As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Do your best to come to me soon. For Demas, in love with this present world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful in my ministry. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Lord, reveal your love among us, that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations, and teach our leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness, and her servants with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us and through us your will may be done. The Collect for the Fourth Sunday of Easter. O God, whose Son is the Good Shepherd of your people, Grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who, with you and the Holy Spirit, lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Gospel for the Feast of St. Mark Almighty God, by the hand of Mark the Evangelist, you have given to your church the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. 
We thank you for his witness and pray that we may be firmly grounded in its truth through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, creator of day and night, mm. giving rest to the weary, renewing the strength of those who are spent, bestowing upon us occasions of song in the evening. As you have protected us in the day that is past, so be with us in the coming night. Free us from evil, sin, and fear, for you are our light and salvation and the strength of our life. To you be glory for endless ages. Amen. Grant, Lord, that we may be faithful to you without turning aside, worship you without growing weary, serve you without feeling, failing, diligently seek you, happily find you, and forever possess you, the one and only God, blessed forever and ever. Amen. Grant to your servants, O God, to be set on fire with your love to be strengthened by your power, to be illuminated by your spirit, to be filled with your grace, and to move on with your help through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Light nor darkness, Lord, we pray, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night for the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Merciful God, to you we commend ourselves and all those who need your help and correction. Where there is hatred, give love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not seek so much to be consoled as to console to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving we receive, in pardoning we are pardoned, and it is in dying we are born into eternal life. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for your we thank you for your for your the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our parts, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit. And in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us evermore. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the soul of our dear father, Titus Akbarali, rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. <laughs>